Some plot holes are so big that no one even notices them. Hey guys, it's Phoebe with Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 insane things TV shows just glossed over. We're taking a look at plot holes and inconsistencies that went unnoticed or uncommented on by the characters. Let's get to it. Number 10, Fast Travel, Game of Thrones. George R. R. Martin's epic story of political intrigue and deadly dragons takes place on the vast continent of Westeros. Early on, we're introduced to a world that, although fantasy-based, is very much grounded in reality. One of these points of grounding is travel time. The distance between King's Landing and Winterfell is around 1,500 miles. In the early episodes of the show, characters and armies take weeks to travel this distance. We've been riding for a month, my love. Surely the dead can wait. However, as the show progressed and plot points needed to be wrapped up, even greater distances than these were covered in much shorter periods. Number 9. Google Searches – Dexter So I hear a rumor you're tracking all our internet activity. So is it true? Because I can explain all that shemale stuff. Sadly, it seems to be the case that shows about crimes and police tend to have some of the biggest logical holes in them. Dexter is a show about a Miami blood spatter analyst who uses his position to track down and kill murderers and other foul criminals. He uses his work computer, that is, the one at the police station, to gather information about his victims. We assume, like any other work environment, that the Miami police have an IT department and can see the internet activity on their network. If that's the case, why has no one noticed that every time the quiet guy looks up a criminal, they end up dead soon after? Please, you have to understand. <laughs> Trust me, I definitely understand. Number 8. Ted's Voice – How I Met Your Mother Kids, I'm going to tell you an incredible story. The story of how I met your mother. When a show is about an adult narrating their life as a kid, we understand that there will be some differences in how the narrator sounds and how the younger character sounds. However, in the case of How I Met Your Mother, the narrator's age is pretty close to that of the actor we see in the series. This being the case, we would assume that their voices should pretty much sound the same. It was like something from an old movie, where the sailor sees the girl across the crowded dance floor, turns to his buddy and says, See that girl? I'm gonna marry her someday. This seems to indicate that at some point, Ted's voice changed drastically, or the producers just messed up. Number 7. Caitlin – Heroes In the show, Caitlin is an Irish woman who runs a family pub when she becomes the love interest of Peter Petrelli, an evolved human who has the power to mimic the abilities of other evolved humans. For a while, Caitlin is an integral part of the story, but at some point she travels to the future with Peter and is captured. Peter tries to escape back to the present with her, but actually leaves without her. I'm so scared. Please don't let him take me away from me. I'll get us home, I promise. Please, Peter. Peter, don't take me. I'll get us back. Take me. Please, no. Peter, no! 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 After that, we don't really have much information on what happens to her. Kind of sucks that she just got left behind. But what really sucks is that we don't get some resolution from it. Number 6. Why Only Run? The Flash My name is Barry Allen. I am the fastest man alive. Superheroes aren't the most logical character archetypes. Oftentimes, in an effort to make them ultra cool, the powers they have are just plain over the top. This can be a little boring since they essentially become unbeatable. In fact, they usually end up having some kind of silly weakness written into their character. In the case of The Flash, he's one of the most powerful heroes ever created. His powers could let him defeat nearly any foe with a blindingly fast punch or kick. However, he chooses to slow down every time he intends to throw down. Do it! Number 5. The Many Skills of Sidney Bristow, alias. We all know that secret agents can pretty much do anything from karate to hardcore science stuff. This trope is particularly prevalent in Alias, a show about a CIA agent played by Jennifer Garner, who must maintain several secret identities, or, you know, aliases. However, things become a bit stretched here when we take a step back and look at just how many disciplines Sydney knows in depth. For the amount of stuff she knows, there's no way she could be doing anything other than studying. To us, this seems just a little too implausible, and yet no one seems to notice. So are you okay? Yeah, I can't even explain it, so don't ask it. You just gotta trust me. 
Number four, ages, friends. Hey, how you doing? If you didn't know, Friends was a very popular television show during the 90s and early 2000s that aired for just about 10 years. It followed a group of several more or less happy-go-lucky friends who lived in implausibly nice New York apartments. As with any show that lasts for a significant amount of time, the writers and producers tend to change. This means that there are inconsistencies. In the case of Friends, their ages seem to change without too much comment, or trigger much of a change in their characterization. I know! Are these mistakes just failures to pay attention to details, or does Friends take place in an alternate quantum reality? We're gonna, we're gonna figure this out. Number 3. Michael Scott Never Gets Fired – The Office People say I am the best boss. They go, God, we've never worked in a place like this before. You're hilarious. And you get the best out of us. Um, I think that pretty much sums it up. The list of Michael's transgressions as the regional manager of a failing paper distribution company feel nearly endless. Some of the most egregious stuff like borderline sexual harassment, running over an employee, and racist jokes left his employees shocked. Bum, bum, ba, bum, bum, come on, Olympics of suffering right here. Slavery versus the Holocaust, come on. But no one seemed to talk too much about how he should have been fired years ago. We understand he's got a gift for sales, but his behavior was pretty poor. The whole documentary about The Office should have focused on how miraculous it is that Michael still had a job. Would I rather be feared or loved? Um, easy, both. I want people to be afraid of how much they love me. Number 2. Barb's Disappearance – Stranger Things Barbara Holland was the well-meaning, sincere and slightly dorky best friend of Nancy Wheeler. In the show, she escorts Nancy to a party and is pretty much left out of the whole situation until she tries to shotgun a beer. Gnarly. Are you okay? She then ends up disappearing, and we're left to wonder why this small town didn't go into panic mode immediately. You'd think that such an occurrence would cause a pretty big reaction. Instead, the event was pretty much glossed over and forgotten. Hey, Allie. Where's Barb? Um, shouldn't you know? You haven't seen her anywhere at all? This is especially true considering some of the other events in the show that occurred around the same time. Kids missing, man. Cholo class. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. How Did Rick Survive? The Walking Dead <coughs> Shane Usually, shows and movies about zombies ask you to take a few leaps of imagination in order to enjoy them. Like, you know, believing zombies are possible. In the case of The Walking Dead, there's a detail at the very beginning that is just kind of glossed over. Completely. Rick goes into a coma, but when he wakes up, he's one of the last human beings alive. But how exactly did he survive? It seems like the hospital wasn't the safest place around, yet he made it out just fine, and noticeably unzombified. I mean, yeah, Rick surviving is pretty bad, but I want justice for Barb. But what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments or tweet me at Phoebe underscore WM. And don't forget to check out this video.